Hey everyone, Carmen here, digital editor at Ms. back from Atlanta at the National Women's Studies Association Conference with Ileana Jimenez, also known as Feminist Teacher. Uh, thank you so much for being for here today. Me. And Ileana is on our Committee of Scholars, so I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about bringing feminist academia into your classroom, especially because, and you've been talking about this so much with me today, and I love it, the idea of making sure that these conversations are not limited to women's studies classrooms or even college classrooms, but making sure that high schoolers and um, you know younger feminists are also getting some feminist pedagogy in the mix. And so how did you sort of invent that framework? And you know, how do you bring sort of feminist academia into that space and make it accessible in that space? Thank you for that question. This is, this is exactly the, the question of movement building for feminist teachers and why I'm here with you. Um, okay, I started teaching 20 years ago, way before social media was even a thing. And what I'm noticing is that Students today are finding the word intersectionality as a hashtag mm. on their Instagram, yep. on Snapchat, whatever, whatever face, whatever social media they're on. They're finding feminism as a hashtag, but, but what they're not finding is the history, the literature, yeah. the media, the activism. They're not finding the genealogy. They're not finding the background to what led to that word. Whether it's intersectionality, feminism, white feminism. So as a teacher, as a high school English teacher, and I think high school English teachers across the, not only the country, but the world, history teachers as well, and basically all disciplines, K through 12, should be engaging in an obligation to teach young people how we got to the word intersectionality. Why are we reading Kimberly Crenshaw's Mapping the Margins in our history and English classes? Why are we reading Audre Lorde's Sister Outsider? in our English classrooms as like black feminist essays. Why are we reading uh, essays by the Black Lives Matter founders? Alicia Garza. Um, all of those women have written online important essays. So I bring that into the classroom. Awesome. Well, and what would you say, I know, you know, sometimes um, there's this pushback of sort of like, we can't talk about these issues with high schoolers. They're too young. And then I think what's been interesting, and I know we were just in a workshop where you talked about Me Too K-12, this idea that we're trying to shelter students from things they're literally experiencing, but have no language to talk about because no one's talking to them. So what, how do you sort of bridge that gap? And have you ever sort of like had to manage that conflict when you were bringing this stuff into your classroom? Yeah, so I, I really believe that they're not too young. They're already finding the content on their social media, on their phones, in their conversations with their friends. So my professional responsibility is to engage young people in the conversation that's already happening around them. So for, for example, Me Too, Sexual harassment is happening to young people, whether they're, I, see, I teach in New York City, so it's street harassment, the subway, walking from the subway to school, yes. back to the subway home. And so they're already encountering these, these experiences on their bodies. Why not bring it into, why not bring it into the classroom through an article, through a video, through a conversation, and then, then they get to blog about it in my class and say, I'm reading Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde in my English teacher's classroom. How do I bring that, breaking silences framework to talking about me too to talking about how young women of color are being sexually harassed at school so that's what i try to do which is to say how do we use feminist texts particularly black feminist texts latina feminist texts women of color feminist texts into the classroom and allow young people to say well how does that apply to my life how does that apply to my everyday experiences um, and sometimes it's not always sexual harassment. Maybe it's something related to other forms of gender-based violence coming out, queer identity. Um, there's so many things that young people are experiencing that they can look back and say, oh wait, women of color feminism actually applies to my everyday experience. Well, and now that you've been sort of bringing these concepts into your classroom for um, years, what have you seen long-term impact for these, you know, these students learning? afterwards mm -hmm. nice um what i love about this class is that students take it in their junior and senior year of high school and they they gain this consciousness and critical awareness 
and their ability to not only read text, but to read the world around them. And then they say, wait a second, I think I want to be a women's and gender studies major in college. Yes. Or maybe I want to do like a <laughs> black studies major in college. Or I want to do like Native American studies or Asian American studies. Like so they see it as an opening, it's an entry point for what they may study in college. And even if they never studied in college, they create interventions with their friends. If their one boy came back and said, young African American boy came back, took my class on the when he was in high school, went off to college, and I said to him, what are you majoring in? Not at all, not at all anything related to women's and gender studies. I said, well, how are you applying the class to your life? And he said, actually, a lot of my friends say sexist comments, so I will intervene Oh, yes. in those comments during the conversation. So this is the impact, right? Like you don't have to major yeah. in feminist studies to have an impact on your peers, which makes an impact on who gets to be on the Supreme Court, right? Like if you're sitting next to someone who's about to become a judge and you know, wait a second, your behavior is actually pretty questionable. Like you might want to examine yourself and like think about like, how am I being misogynist? How am I being sexist? How am I perpetuating toxic masculinity? Like, examine that for yourself because I took this class in high school and it had an impact on me. Oh, amazing. And, you know, you were also here doing a teach in um, and during the pre conference. Um, and there are other K 12 teachers here who are sort of engaging with this work and also trying to bring it back into their classrooms. And you also were really ahead of the curve on leveraging digital media in your classroom. So I think, you know, we've been doing this Miss Classroom program trying to bring Ms. as a teaching text into classrooms for a long time. And you've also been teaching students about blogging and getting them to express themselves and connect with feminists online for a long time. What are some of the best practices that you would you would give to teachers who are trying to do the same work? Yeah, there's so many layers to that. So blogging is a great way to get students to write about things that they care about while also still using the text of the, in the class that you're teaching. So if you're teaching I'm going to go back to Audrey Lord, which is such a classic black, black feminist text. But like, sister outside of you, are learning, first of all, if you're an English teacher, you want to teach your students how to read. Close reading. You want to learn, you want to teach your students how to think about how to apply these frameworks to say, not only something they care about, but then how do they write about it. Mm. So we have a blog in the class, it's called afterthethirdpower.com, and my students will then blog about, I have one transgender student uh, from last year who wrote about being Afro-Latinx, coming out, being, um, identifying as transgender and identifying as non-binary, and, and then they wrote about the history of like trans women of color in this country, so how many things are going on there in terms of <gasps> disciplines, yeah. history, writing, close reading, analysis, that's what we want our students to do. So all of these skills that we want school to basically cover feminism in the class, feminism in schools, feminism in the classroom, feminist pedagogy is able to do for our students. So that, I mean, it, it's, they also learn the language to not only become critically conscious, but to understand themselves and their identities and become more aware of how their own personal trajectory in life has a certain kind of um, powerful, thoughtful, meaningful access to who they want to be in the future. Awesome, and I'm also curious, what do you, how do you feel the movement can make more, how do you feel the movement can make more space for young activists? How do we make sure that these students of yours who are clearly the feminist leaders of tomorrow, um, and probably today, honestly, um, how do we make sure that they're being heard outside these classrooms, that they're being heard by feminists you know, across the country who lead organizations, who organizers who are trying to work with young people? How do we sort of bridge, make those connections more valuably? Um, I think one of the things for me at least is we really need a teacher preparation to be much stronger. It's it's still frightening to me the fact that even today in 2018, the teachers are not actually being taught pedagogical frameworks for social justice. So they're not learning feminist pedagogy as a framework to teach. They're not learning social justice pedagogy. They're not learning anti-racist pedagogy. They're not learning you know any of these things that allow for teaching to be liberatory and emancipatory. So. From my perspective, I think activists, academia, media need to be a part of saying, how can we be a part of 
bolstering our local teachers, giving them resources like this magazine, um, both in print and online. Like, how do you use Ms. in the classroom like, online? Having that access to the reader that's online. Um, having access to the blog, which is already online. Right? Like, so how do you use that? How do you create a curriculum around that for teachers to use? And then also, how do you prepare teachers just like to become a pipeline? We were talking about pipeline earlier. How do you create pipelines of feminist teachers? Yes. Bringing them into bringing them to conferences like this, which are really meant for feminist scholars. But there are so many more feminist teachers here than I've seen in my entire whatever it is, eight years that I've been to this conference. Why? Because we're building the space for teachings to happen before the conference happens. Teaching them exactly what I said earlier, women of color feminist pedagogies, frameworks, content. Teachers want content. They want something to bring back to their students. So that's what, this, what these teachings are for. It's happening in spaces really meant for scholars, but we're creating spaces for teachers to come into. Awesome, and I think that's a perfect lead into. I've been asking everyone I talk to at the conference this question, which is the theme of this year's conference is, you know, imagining these radical visions for the future and feminist futures and visioning. And I've, I've been thinking a lot about visioning, I think right now in this really trying time, we need to sort of feminist vision more. Um, and so what is your radical vision for the future of classrooms, of young feminist spaces, and just of this movement? So I do a lot of national and global work with feminist teachers across the country and around the world. And what I see is a real desire, hunger for teachers to be connected to each other in terms of what they're doing in terms of curriculum design, content, assessments. Um, they want to collaborate. Teachers are very collaborative in nature. Um, I think that in, in many ways, academia um, discourages collaboration because you're so trying to get like a publication out, yeah. or you're so trying to get your 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 work out for you. And I think teachers have a different model for how to do education. And I think that's something we can bring to academia, which is feminist pedagogy for us is about a much more long-term social justice, collaborative, solidarity work. And so my long-term vision is how can feminist teachers feminist scholars, activists, media makers work together to create schools that are feminist oriented in terms of leadership, administrators, it can't just be the teachers, right? It's teachers and administrators yes. and teacher preparation courses that create teachers that will bring these laboratory spaces to our schools. So that's the longer term vision is not only feminist teachers, feminist schools. Oh, I love it. Yes, and feminist school boards. Yes. Something. <laughs> I'm in a school board. Yeah. Everyone go run for a school board. Yes. Help take over. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for everything you thank do you. and thank for teaching you. liberation thank and for you. being here. Yeah, uh, it's been a pleasure. And thank you all for tuning in. Thank I'll you. be back soon. And yeah.